Welcome to a mini lecture about the relationship between the determinant and colorability. Uh, this uh, mini lecture is based on page 22 of the notes. So here's a busy screen. Um, it's all about this theorem up here, theorem 3.11, and uh, the content of the screen is trying to explain to you why the theorem works. So what does the theorem say? It says that a link L can be colored mod n if and only if the greatest common divisor of the determinant of L and n is bigger than 1. In other words, that's if and only if the determinant and n have a common factor. And let's try and see why. So what I've got on the left of the screen here is a statement of what it means to be colored mod n. And what we've got on the right here is uh, something to do with the determinant and we're going to work between them. So uh, let's start. Can I color the trefoil mod n? Well how do I tell? Um, well I label my arcs, I'm going to use x0, x1, x2 and I label my crossings, well I've used colors here, green, pink and orange. And then the link can be colored mod n if and only if there are x0, x1, x2 not all congruent such that the coloring equations hold. And we have to, don't forget the not all congruent statement. Now, let's remember that we can assume without loss in a coloring that our favorite arc has label zero. So we can assume that x zero was always zero. What does that do? Well, that means that we can eradicate x zero from all our equations just by assuming it's zero. And let's also remember that we proved that the sum of the coloring equations is zero, which I've written as this, green plus pink plus orange equals zero. How does that help us? Well, if the first two equations here are true, green and pink, then so is orange, because orange is minus the green equation minus the pink equation. Um, so I don't need to check three equations, I just need to check two. And if I then write uh, this lot out again, what I get is this condition here in the second step. Now let's take this system of equations and re-express everything in terms of matrices. So we're going over to the third step now. The trefoil can be colored mod n if and only if, well we used to say there are x1 and x2 not both zero, and now we say if and only if there's a non-zero vector x0, x1 in uh, z mod n squared. And it used to be such that these two equations hold, but now it's such that this matrix equation holds in z over n squared. And why is that? Well, the green equation over here, that's the same as the green line of this vector equation, and the pink equation over here, that's the same as the pink line, the second line of this vector equation. Now, what do we have? We have uh, we're asking for a non-zero vector that when you multiply it by um, this matrix gives us zero. And in the notes we have lemma 3.12 which tells us exactly that there is such an x0, x1 if and only if GCD of D and N is positive, uh, sorry, is bigger than one. Where D now, this D is the determinant of this matrix 1, minus 2, 1, 1 that we had in the previous step there. So we're finished as long as we can see that the matrix here is the coloring matrix. And that's an exercise for you. You should start over here and trace through the construction of the matrix and check that it is the coloring matrix. And that's an account of the proof. And so if you go into the notes and read it through, um, you'll see that it's uh, a sort of formal expression of all the, all the things I've been trying to say just here. So let's try and use the theorem now. So let's go on. Exercise. Show that the link L down here can be colored mod 2 and 5, but not mod 3. So, um, uh, I suggest you pause the video and try and decide what you're going to do and if you can see how to do it, do so.
And what I'll do first is tell you the first step. So my first step is this. Let's divide up the page. Step one. Well, remember what the theorem said. It says that we can color L modulo five if and only if the GCD of five and det L is bigger than one. So compute det L. Okay, so if you didn't do that already, pause and do it. And I'll tell you how I do it in just a second. So here I go trying to compute the determinant of L. So first I take a chessboarding. I assume you're all happy with the chessboarding by now. Next, I name the regions. Zero, always the infinite region. One, two, three. Next, I compute the signs of all the crossings according to the chessboarding. And remember that the rule is this one. If at the crossing we have what's on the left, then the sign is plus one. This is where the overstrand is clockwise from the shaded part. And if it's what's on the right, then it's minus one. This is where the overstrand is anti-clockwise from the shaded part. Well, have a stare at this and decide all the signs. It's easy, they're all plus one. Now, we write down our matrix G plus. Remember, that's the square matrix with columns 0, 1, 2, 3, 1 per region, and rows 0, 1, 2, 3. So I said columns and rows in the wrong order there, sorry. And what goes in the 0, 0 entry, it's the sum of the signs around region 0 negated. So it's minus 4. 0, 1. That's uh, in position 0, 1. That's the sum of the signs between regions 0 and 1. Well, there's 1, 2, 3 plus 1s. Uh, what goes in entry 0, 2? It's the sum of the signs where region 0 and region 2 meet. Well, there aren't any. And what's the entry in uh, 0, 3? It's the sum of the signs where region 0 and region 3 meet. Well, that's exactly 1. It's here, plus 1. And the matrix is symmetric, so I can do that now. OK, and now I'm going to silently fill in the rest. And I should double check. Uh, it's, there's an easy double check. You've got to double check that it's symmetric, and it is. And you should check that every row and every column adds to zero. And they do, so that's good. And uh, that was our G+. Plus. So now we want to write down G. What's G? It's what we get by deleting a row and a column. So I'm going to delete the zeroth row and the zeroth column. In general, I would choose to delete a row and a column that left as many zeros in what was left as possible. Well, in this case, every row has one zero and every column has one zero. So it's not going to make any odds what choice I make. Uh, so g is minus 4, 1, 0, 1, minus 2, 1, 0, 1, minus 2. So det g, that's uh, minus 4 times the determinant of this square matrix, which is 4 minus 1, minus 1 for the uh, second entry times the determinant of uh, the first and last 2 by 2 column, that's minus 2. So this is minus 12 plus 2, so that's minus 10. So that det L is mod, is mod det G is 10.
So that was my step one. And then my step two will be to use the theorem. So step two, use the theorem. And what we have is that uh, the GCD, well, I'm trying to answer the question, can I color L mod two? Well, that's if and only if the GCD of the determinant, which is 10 and two is bigger than one. Well, the GCD in this question is in question is two, which is bigger than one. Similarly, the GCD of 10 and five, that's five, which is bigger than one. But the GCD of 10 and three, well, 10 and three have no common factors, so it's one. So consequently, L can be colored mod, not med, mod two, five, but not 10. Uh, sorry, but not three. There we go. So that's the end of the exercise and the end of the lecture.